Jeffrey Graham is going to join us on stage, and he's going to be giving a keynote about leadership, about building an organization, about the importance of insights and analytics. And uh, Jeffrey joined the board shortly after I uh, joined the ARF. I, it was just a delight to uh, invite him to join our board. He leads research at Twitter. Uh, he was a senior executive at Google. He received his PhD in sociology in 2009 in the area of rumor control. So if anybody wants to get the word out uh, on, for your research through your company, you might want to pull him aside and ask him how he did that. And uh, he leads an organization that, uh, that went from five to 59 people uh, in, in almost, I mean, breathtaking speed, less than a year and a half. And uh, so please put your hands together and uh, welcome Jeffrey to the stage. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. All right. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Good. Um, I'm supposed to talk today about reinventing uh, research and analytics. I think that's a really nice way of saying we're making it up as we go along. Um, but what I really hope to accomplish today <clears throat> is to help you understand a little bit more about Twitter, what it is, what makes it different, what makes it special. And I also want to celebrate some of the work uh, that our team has been doing to grow uh, Twitter's business. So to start with, uh, in terms of Twitter, I thought it'd be best if I shared uh, the way that I use the platform, uh, could give you kind of a personal view of what Twitter means to me before getting into uh, some of the broad areas of Twitter. So like every proud father, I like to share pictures of my kids. This is my son having a good hair day last week. Uh, tweeted out a little bit earlier when he was having a really bad day and he wore industrial strength ear protection to the dinner table. Um, I like to tweet about my daughter. Uh, she's 13 years old. She still likes to hang out with her dad. I try to capture every one of those moments uh, and share those with the people uh, that follow me. And my broader family, which is the research team at Twitter, I really like to share our uh, accomplishments and our celebrations. This is a picture of us uh, celebrating uh, when we were published in the Journal of Adver Advertising Research a couple months ago. Twitter isn't though, you don't have to tweet to be on Twitter. You can share things, you can consume content, uh, and I certainly like to uh, share things that I think are cool or funny. So this is a headline uh, that this is the GIF that perfectly summarizes Canada. And I think that's worth watching twice, because I really, I really think that that's so sweet. I can watch that one all day. Um, you know, Twitter has live video, and one of the, the cool ways of using Twitter is to keep up with what's happening in the moment when it's on TV. You can see real-time highlights and share those with your friends. Uh, this was an amazing moment last week. I travel a lot, so uh, when people take pictures of me around the world, uh, I like to share those pictures. This is me at a, at a soccer game. I guess now I'm a Colchonero, whatever the hell that is. Um, and uh, this is me in London uh, last month uh, with my London look. Uh, I have recently shared pictures of myself at the holiday party, the Twitter holiday party, uh, trying to show everybody that research people can be funky and they can dance. Um, and of course, I use Twitter for shameless self-promotion. Uh, so I, I love to tweet out uh, my driver's license picture as much as possible so people understand just how serious a man I really am. Uh, but when we look at Twitter um, and we kind of try to understand what makes it special and what makes it different, um, I think what we understand is that it has characteristics all at once of being live, of being public, of being conversational, and being widely distributed. And we don't think there's any other digital platform that shares all of those characteristics at once. I was talking to uh, a colleague of mine, uh, a former colleague at Google, Cenk Bernbull, uh, a couple nights ago at dinner, 
And he was saying that um, the Android a Twitter app was uh, taking five seconds for him uh, to load and to, and to tweet. And he said, you know, what's the point of using Twitter if I have to wait five seconds? And I think that kind of captures uh, what is the live nature of this platform. And here we're looking at uh, people tweeting about the sunrise around the world. And if you look uh, now at India, or at least uh, Malaysia and India, you can see as people wake up, as they see the sunrise, they're sharing at the same moment uh, this, this celebration of, of, uh, of the sun and sharing it all at one time. Then you'll notice that nobody wakes up to see the sunrise on the east coast of the US, <laughs> but people are up in the rest of the country. Um, we can see that phenomenon of that live nature of Twitter uh, when we look at um, live events. So this is the Oscar uh, ceremony um, uh, very recently. And you can see as these events unfold that are exciting for people, like when there's an award or there's a, a celebration or a, a, a great uh, performance, that the whole world is coming together at this specific moment. Uh, and they're excited about it, and they're sharing it on Twitter. In fact, when we look at the traffic to uh, our platform during live moments, here we're looking uh, at uh, the VMA Awards last year, we get a huge surge of traffic to our apps and to our website uh, when uh, there are live moments like the VMAs. Uh, we also see that some of the audience comes from other channels during these moments when they can share and converse uh, about these live moments from other media. Twitter is also public. So when people sign up for Twitter, uh, the majority of them uh, agree that they're not just tweeting to their friends and, and to their family network, um, but they actually can tweet to the entire world. And that has some really cool characteristics that I think is, is really captured by mean tweets. Uh, and I'm not sure if you've ever seen this, but I'll share with you uh, one of my favorite uh, mean tweet episodes of the Jimmy Kimmel Show. Obama's hair is looking grayer these days. Can't imagine why, since he doesn't seem to be one bit worried about all that's going on. <laughs> is there any way we could fly Obama to some golf course halfway around the world and just leave him there? <laughs> well, RW surfer girl, I think that's a great idea. A 30 rack of Coors Light is $23 now at Sunstop. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> How do you make Obama's eyes light up? Shine a flashlight in his ears. <laughs> That's pretty good. So these are public tweets. People are tweeting about Obama. Uh, and part of the deal is that these tweets can, uh, everybody can see them and everybody can respond to them, whether they're on Twitter or whether they're on TV. And I think that's a cool aspect of Twitter um, that makes it really interesting. When you combine the public with the conversational, you end up with some really cool things that you can witness on Twitter. Um, here, we have Drake uh, uh, tweeting that the first million is the hardest, kind of a, a humble brag, I guess. And then you have the billionaire T. Boone Pickens say, actually, the first billion is the hardest. Retweet Drake, the first million is the hardest. And then Drake comes back, and he says that T. Boone Pickens just stunted on him heavy. I like this conversation uh, with the CIA starting it, saying, uh, we're very excited to be sharing classified information with the world through Twitter. And then WikiLeaks responding uh, that they look forward to sharing uh, the classified information that they've released to the world. Um, and then the CIA comes back and says that WikiLeaks just stunted on them heavy. Actually, they, they didn't really say that, but that would have been cool. Um, sometimes brands talk to one another. So Old Spice, for some reason, person who's managing their account decided to make fun of Taco Bell's commercials, says that why is that fire sauce, isn't it made with, is it really made with any real fire? Seems like false advertising. And then Taco Bell shot back to Old Spice. <laughs> and that's pretty cool. Um, it's funny. 
And, um, but what's also cool, you think about it from a brand perspective, brands spend a lot of money creating personalities around their advertising. And this is a great way to complement those brands and the equity of those brands because they can actually speak with a voice. And it's kind of a cool thing that one brand can talk to another. Uh, Twitter is also widely distributed. You, in most uh, developed countries in the world, you can't turn on TV or read the newspaper without seeing Twitter content there. Uh, I'm sure that you've all witnessed, uh, actually, I am sure that you've all witnessed uh, this particular tweet from the Oscars uh, last year. Uh, and just to kind of get a sense of the, uh, the way that content spreads, um, this particular tweet had 3.4 million retweets. So basically, people saw it and they shared it, okay? 3.4 million. Don't know if that's a big number or a small number. Um, when we count, though, all the impressions that, that those retweets created, because when you tweet, all of your followers who come on the platform at that particular moment will see that tweet, and that creates a lot of impressions. So there are actually 3.3 billion impressions of this tweet as it spread uh, through people's social graphs. We asked Kantar to try to measure the Oscar tweet off Twitter. So they went and they combed uh, television data as well as uh, print data and digital uh, website data. And while it's not a perfect science, Kantar Media estimated that actually there are 4.2 billion people on Earth who saw this particular tweet. Now, of course, this is unique. We don't get an Ellen tweet every day. But you can just see the magnification of the influence and impact of Twitter as it moves off of the platform. So uh, Twitter is live, public, uh, conversational, distributed. Um, one of the things that I think sums all of this up the best, all of these things together, um, this is Kobe Bryant for the first time watching his game on TV when he scored 81 points. So they replayed it on TV. He watched it, and he live tweeted it. Um, and that's really cool. So you've got the distribution of Twitter. You've got the live um, experience of Kobe Bryant watching this show, uh, this, this game, which is really exciting. And then you start to see conversation happening as the public comments on Twitter get shared with Kobe Bryant. He can respond to that. And that creates a really nice uh, content experience uh, for, uh, for people watching TV. And we also learned that he eat pepperoni pizza before the game, which blows my mind. Um, so that's Twitter. Um, that's kind of uh, what makes Twitter uh, different. Um, and of course, we're evolving every day. Um, I also uh, want to share with you um, what the role of our team is at Twitter, the role of the ad research team. The way I like to explain it is that you know Twitter is just an app. Um, it's got a big audience. Uh, people are talking to each other. People are sharing content, but there's no reason for a media company or an agency or an advertiser to care about Twitter unless they understand that it builds business results for them. And so the job of our team is to connect what's happening on Twitter, the advertising on Twitter, the engagement on Twitter with the outcomes of our partners so that they can understand that it's an important uh, medium on which to invest, and also to understand how to invest better so they can get uh, improved results. Uh, there's kind of thinking about how I would explain our team, uh, what we do. Uh, I thought there's kind of four things that are principles around our team. And the first is that we engage with the market. We're very much in the market helping clients every day understand uh, what the value of their investments are. Uh, we go with the sales folks, with the account uh, leaders, and we talk to clients about what's working on Twitter, what isn't working on Twitter. Uh, and being in the market uh, is really a strength, uh, I think, of our team. As Gail mentioned, we've grown from 
five to 59 folks uh, around the world over the last two years. And I think that the fact that we're in the market working to grow Twitter in a very public way uh, with our clients has been a big part of uh, the, the acceleration of the, of, of, and the support that um, our team has had within Twitter. The second thing that, uh, that I think that we um, do pretty well and we try to get better every day is to ask good questions and answer them in compelling, inspiring ways. We're often taking big questions like, is Twitter worth it? And trying to break it down into smaller questions that we can answer with research. A good example, I think, of this is, as you may know, we have partnerships uh, around the world um, with a number of research companies to provide Twitter data uh, for television ratings. So you can look at a show, uh, you can see that uh, it gets a certain rating against an audience, and then you can see how much Twitter engagement, how many tweets, how many people are tweeting about that particular show. And when we first started rolling out this research um, a year, a year and a half, two years ago, uh, we got a lot of questions about it. One of the great questions was, from agencies, and they said, well, you know, why should I use Twitter to plan TV? Um, if people are watching Twitter while they're watching TV, then they're not even gonna see my television commercials, so maybe I should actually tweet, try to plan TV so that people aren't using Twitter. Um, and we are like, no, 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 we can't, we can't let that situation happen, and so we wanted to break apart this question uh, to try to answer why agencies should plan uh, with Twitter. So first, we figured it's probably important to um, figure out if people are watching more television commercials when they're using Twitter, um, because a television commercial certainly can't work if nobody sees it. Uh, so we partnered with Symphony AM, it was a single source panel across digital mobile television and we observed that about 17% of the time, people click away during the commercial break when they're watching TV. But when they're using Twitter, it's about half that amount of time. And what we realized is that if you have Twitter in your hand, you don't have the remote control in your hand, so you're much more likely to be exposed uh, to that television commercial. Well, okay, that's fine, people are watching television, or at least they're in front of a television commercial, but maybe they're not paying attention that te to that television commercial. So what does Twitter and Twitter usage do to the effectiveness of television advertising? And what we did to answer that question is we worked with Millward Brown, and we created a survey design, and we compared people that were using uh, or watching TV without using Twitter, and people that were watching TV with Twitter and we compared the effectiveness of the television commercials in a fairly standard way that you can probably infer, and I can give you more details any time, but basically what we found is that when people watch, use, watch television with Twitter, that television ad is more effective in delivering its message. If you're a content owner, um, if you're a television network, you also want to know if people use, when they use Twitter, whether it makes television more fun and more exciting. Um, and we wanted to understand this, so we kind of played this, this dirty trick. Um, last year in March Madness, we invited folks in, in their friends groups, to watch a, an important basketball game. Uh, they were hooked up with biometric sen sensors, and then we actually took Twitter away from half of those groups. And we compared the uh, emotional the reaction Twitter. of uh, those folks that were using Twitter while watching television and people that weren't. And, and what we found is that actually using Twitter makes television a lot more fun. Uh, people not only can engage with each other in the room and share information, but they also can engage with that television content more. So that was a really interesting and important finding for us. And then, of course, the important question, uh, does uh, Twitter help TV sell more stuff? And to answer this question, uh, we did a variety of marketing mix models. We worked with uh, three different marketing mix modeling shops. 
across three different categories in two different markets. We simply wanted to understand what does planning television with Twitter do to television ROI? And what we found across these categories is that when advertisers advertise on TV but also use Twitter, the return on investment, the return on ad spend of that television actually is higher. So television works more, it sells more when advertisers also invest in Twitter. So we're making television uh, better for users, better for content owners, better for agencies, and better for advertisers. Um, and so all of these things kind of work together to answer this question. Um, and you know, we talk a lot about uh, storytelling, and we try to be great storytellers. We also try to write really good sentences that other people can use in their stories. So each of these broken down questions and the research that we use goes off and can be used by our sales teams, our media teams, our agency teams. And we're really, really happy when other folks present our research. Uh, I think the second thing we really try to do on the research team is to experiment with research. Um, so we spend a lot of time uh, watching people watch TV uh, and, and doing all types of qualitative work. Um, we've uh, experimented with brain research. Uh, this is work that we did in the UK last year where we we're able to uh, measure the brain activity in different areas of people's brains while they're using Twitter and to see how the engagement with that platform was registering in terms of uh, emotional intensity, relevance, and also how it impacted their memory. And it seems with this research that there's something about this kind of live in the moment aspect of Twitter that makes it perform very, very well relative to uh, the, this company's digital norms. We've worked with facial coding, an excellent area, I think, for the industry to go forward and understand the emotions of people while they use media. We work with Nielsen here to compare um, kind of the uh, emotional arousal uh, and unhappiness around advertising, and what we found is that disruptive online video advertising um, really tends to be kind of, sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's rejected by people uh, watching uh, or using digital media with online advertising, but when we give them the chance to actually opt in to that advertising, they're much happier about it, and you can see it in their faces. One of my favorite experiments was to answer a really hard question, which is, if a brand has a lot of followers, does that make a difference in terms of the way that they're trusted, in terms of the way their advertising works? And it's hard to do to answer that question. What the UK team came up with is basically they invented a brand, a fake brand, and in a laboratory setting, they exposed people to this brand but with different levels of followers, different messages, different variables. And we're able to find for this fake brand that people actually trusted it a lot more when they saw that it had a lot of followers, which I guess makes a lot of sense, but was, was really interesting to empirically uh, to be able to test. Um, and finally, um, I think our um, one of the things we really focus on is to not just think of ourselves as researchers. Uh, we think of ourselves as consultants, and we also think of ourselves as content producers. Because if we create content that nobody wants to see, nobody wants to hear about, that puts people to sleep, that our salespeople don't want to bring out to the market, then there's really no point. It doesn't make uh, any difference. So when we develop research, we really think about how that research is going to come to life, uh, even before we do that research. So here's an example trying to help clients understand how messages spread through the social graph on Twitter, developing an interesting visualization of how this message of Ryan Gosling, about Ross, Ryan Gosling, spreads through large nodes 
of media as well as through smaller nodes, and then to start to classify how different uh, types of messaging spread uh, throughout uh, the social graph. Uh, we, our UK team's kind of crazy. They told me they were creating a website, and okay, and they created a website. I only have the static version here, um, but usually research teams don't do that. Uh, they went, hired an agency. Uh, they needed to help clients understand when the moments were throughout the day and throughout the week that people were talking about specific subjects in the UK. Uh, they created a website. Uh, and it became something that uh, was really, really useful to help clients and partners understand that there were everyday moments happening around their category uh, where uh, uh, they could engage with people on Twitter. This is not the most exciting thing in the world. I know that people do infographics all the time. We spend a lot of time trying to make things pretty. We work with our marketing department to make them pretty. Um, we create all different shapes and sizes of stuff. Uh, in, in Spain, uh, we created an infographic that looked like a movie ticket. Uh, our, uh, our teams are often creating things and we're dropping them off on the salespeople's desk because we want the research to spread and it's important to make it look good in order to do that. Um, and then finally, in terms of um, qualitative research, uh, we do a lot of it, uh, but when we do a focus group, we try to make sure that it has high production values so that the insights that we're learning from the mouths directly of consumers can then be passed on in a really compelling way to our clients and to our partners. So here's a focus group, uh, later produced into a video, and you can imagine that this gets shown much more often by our teams than if we had used something that was a little bit less visually compelling. Every TV show I watch has in the corner hashtag. Um, so let me end with, with what, we're, what we're thinking about now because we're, we're really not even close to done um, and we're continue to grow and continue to have tons of challenges uh, in front of us. I'd say one of the main challenges that we face is, uh, and opportunities frankly, is to help Twitter itself become more insight driven. We're providing insights all the time to the market, to our clients, to media partners. Uh, Twitter as a technology company has a long way to go to better understand its users, to have empathy and love for its users so that we can build products that they want to use every day. Twitter's used in pretty much every country in the world with notable exceptions that I won't name. Uh, and we need to be there too. Uh, and so being in eight countries is not enough. We need to find ways to get, uh, if not researchers, research uh, to, to these, to these uh, markets. We rely a lot on partners. We spend a lot of time working with our partners, partners like Kantar and Nielsen and GFK, and we really try to take responsibility for nurturing those partnerships. Uh, because uh, we can't scale and we can't do uh, everything. And so it's very important for us to get innovation uh, and ideas as well as uh, to be able to execute through uh, these important uh, research companies. And then finally, I think the, the, the last challenge is, is really to keep pedaling hard. Um, you know, we fight every day at Twitter to show that Twitter is relevant, uh, to show that Twitter matters to client businesses, to television networks. Uh, we fight to learn more about the platform and our users, and that, I think, is a, a challenge that we'll continue to meet uh, and um, really look forward to uh, growing the team and to help uh, Twitter grow with research in the future. Thank you very much.